That's not supposed to be grinding, is yeah. it? No. <laughs> pulled over on the side of the road right now because uh, the car just straight up died on me. And I popped the hood. Come up here and check this out. What would you do without me? We've got some gurgling going on here, so it's definitely overheated. And uh, she's feeling real hot right now. This hose, oil, oil's fine. There's oil in the engine, but for some reason, she just completely died on me. Not a good situation. Not a good situation. So I guess we'll just tie her up and to the truck and tow her home. <laughs> Dang it. It literally just like went Murr, died. Everything shut off. No bueno. All right, let's tie her up and get her home. Can you just push her home? I wanna try and start it. still dead obviously so let's get the tow strap do you want to pull around me and then we'll get tied up and tow home <laughs> <laughs> oh god good thing i always keep a freedom rope with me not sponsored but these ropes have never let me down i've used this thing more times than i can count and it's it's always that, good to have one, you know? Is that bad that you've used it that many times? Well, we don't talk about that, but it's always good to have one. I don't see you ever, we're not dripping, oh. Oh, I think that's just power steering fluid. I'm really glad we were driving together. That would have really sucked if we were on the highway, wouldn't it? I was thinking about it. If it happened on the highway, that would have been... Man, I get spooked getting out of the car on the highway. I know, me too. Anyone else? It's never fun. I should probably shut the door. Oh, uh, you're good. Uh, I'll take my phone if you do it. Just tow me home real slow. Oh, you're still going to go back there? Yeah, well, I mean, someone's got to drive the car. Okay. All right. First time no, you did it. Uh, you told me in the Ranger that one time. Remember? With just the rope? Yeah. I hope you make it back. We'll make it. Uh, just like 10 miles an hour, and I'll put my hazards on. Okay. Okay. Well, this is never fun. I feel like this is the walk of shame of a car guy. Because when you have to get towed to your destination, but luckily we're only like half a mile away dang man the car's been running so strong and it like when it died it was like a bog like i don't know if the just like the holly died or what but we've been having some serious electrical issue where like the battery dies instantly so i'm hoping that maybe it's like an alternator thing and i can get an alternator real quick and a new battery and then, then she'll be back in tip-top shape so i had a feeling that this might be alternator battery related I just hooked up the battery charger and it's reading absolutely zero, which means that there's no juice on this battery. I'm gonna try and turn it over now that it's on the battery charger and we'll see if it works. If it starts up, I know I have an alternator or battery issue. If I don't, we're gonna have to start digging further. So I'm gonna turn it up to a quick charge here and see what happens. Think it's gonna start? Yeah. Promising fuel pump on. It almost sounds like it's locked up. Like the engine's locked up. Really? Yeah, that's what it feels like. I'm gonna let that sit for a couple minutes and try it again. I'm gonna get my computer hooked up to it and see if I can't read any of the data it's showing me. What's that? Can you turn this right here? The supercharger pulley? Yeah. Yeah, we could try and turn it from there and see if it'll turn. See if it turn? Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. So the battery, since it's on the charger, it's only reading 10 volts. That's not right. It should be a lot higher. It should be 12, at least 12 when it's charging, probably 14, you know? So let's uh, let's try and turn it from the supercharger and see if the engine's still freed up, okay? All right, we got a, uh, we're gonna try and turn this thing over via the supercharger. 
Oh, do you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Come a little closer. That's not supposed to be grinding, is yeah. it? No. <laughs> it sounds like it's in the supercharger. Yeah, RIP to that Whipple. <laughs> it's all right. Hopefully we can get another supercharger <laughs> by next weekend and uh, get this thing back going again. It looks like it got my work cut out for me. Yeah, that's a no bueno. Ooh. That's a no bueno situation right there. That's a, you know, that's the second time I've done that on this car. Really? Yeah, it sees up the supercharger. I don't know if it's like a, I wonder if the pump on the intercooler did quit working or what, but yeah, it's definitely broken, I would say. Yeah, I don't think so. Dang, we even went to church today. <laughs> <laughs> Can you maybe pull it apart, pull the head off and see what's... Uh, oh, in here? Yeah. Yeah, you know, it sounds like the rotors are rubbing against the case, like it got too hot. I mean, this feels extremely hot to the touch. And the coolant temps are at like 170, so you're live. Okay, so uh, Papa and I just pulled the belt off of it. We're gonna make sure that it's just the blower that's seized up. If this is locked up right now, then the engine's probably fine. If this is not locked up, then we have a power plant issue. Yeah, it's the blower. Yeah. Dang. Well, <laughs> well, we've got about five days before the next event with this car, so I'm gonna get working on a blower right now. <laughs> hey, dude. You're more and more like a rally car. That's awesome. Heck yeah, dude. It doesn't hit the body or anything. That probably kind of sucked to figure out, didn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's why I took measurements from the beginning. So I knew how far I could go with it. Yeah, dude. Yep. Heck yeah. Yeah, it works, works perfect. <laughs> think sick. we should powder coat them or leave them like bare metal, put some oil on it? What do you think? Um, I'll wipe them down with WD-40 right now just so they don't rust over. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd welds, get them. Brother. I'd get them powder coated for sure. Check this yeah. out. Get in here. Yeah. These welds. My brother's throwing dimes out here. Yeah. Way cleaner than my welds. I'll tell you that. <laughs> many many years of practice. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. Nice work, dude. Yeah. It's kind of fun little project for you. Yeah. Eh? It's different. It is different. Yeah. Sick. Super cool. I like how you kind of cut these off and put them into the top bar. Yeah. Now. Yep. Yeah. Same thing on the other side, right? Yeah, they're identical. Tour bars on the Yeah, you just gotta latch it. Yeah. You can't throw it. That's sick. Yep. <laughs> gotta good. love door bars on the Challenger, right, man? What, yeah. what, what, what's left to do to this thing now? If you guys have any suggestions, I'd love to hear it. We've got the light bar, we got the door bars, we got a three inch lift, we got all trains. It makes over 900 wheel horsepower. I think there's a couple things that I want to do with it. There's like a, there's like a rally that goes on in Northern Florida at this place called the Firm. So I definitely want to like try and put it in that the rear wheel drive rally class. It's a little OP, like a little overpowered, but I think if I put that dual master cylinder handbrake in there, get some practice on the dirt, this thing could probably compete pretty well. I think in the the last race they did, there was two cars in the rear wheel drive class. So as long as I get third. If I get last place, I still get a trophy, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we could do that with it. I want to hear what you guys think I should do with this thing as far as like events or stunts or just generalized fun with the car. You know, like this bumper cover, the hood and the fender are three different colors. The car's kind of clapped out, so I really don't mind doing kind of like full send stuff with it. Uh, you know, the power plant's super strong. So whether we want to swap it into another car eventually or what, I, I really don't know. But I'm kind of having just fun with it, like driving it around town, off-roading with it, taking it to cars and coffee, taking it to Cletus and cars, still doing burnouts with it. It's just gonna be like an all-around fun beater that has way too much horsepower for what I need. And it sounds absolutely ridiculous.
Yeah, I love this thing on the limiter. It sounds so good. Dude, it's so rowdy. You pulled into the track yesterday, and it just echoes throughout the whole I'm going to put that clip in right yeah. here. Rallycat's pretty much wrapped up besides doing the dual master hydro in it and then start taking it to some events. So let's hear what you have to say in the comments about what we should do with this thing. So I got all the tube ends prepped. We have all our layout copes for the pieces of tubing here. I went ahead and cut all those out. As you can see, it has the center line to line up the two copes with. So I do a center line across there and it gives you a measurement to measure between the two pieces and that will give you the right overall height for all these pieces. And then the bars with the radiuses in them, you do a center line on the outside of the radius and then you measure back from the end of the tube to the template there. So we got all these laid out now. Now we're gonna go ahead and get these cut, coped, and ready to tack into the actual U-shape of the door bars. everything cut and coped here now these are on 14 inch spacing so i'll lay out a vent hole that will go from that tube at the intersect point one two three and then up top and on this one is when i weld these tubes in here the oxygen has to expand somewhere or it'll blow out my weld so i'll get these spots prepped on here and then i can get this whole thing tacked together weld it out and then we just got to make our plates for our hinges to mount to and we have the plate for the latch assembly then we'll build out the tube for the actual door latch assembly so you can reach it with your hand up here and you don't have to reach back here for the latch so i'll get that prep get it tacked and welded only thing we got to do now is mount the latch but where the door jam stops on the door there's a gap between there so I'm actually gonna have to remake these and tap some new holes in another piece Parker's outside cat all wrapped up with the door bars. Made a nice little lever right there. She latches just fine. Went ahead and trimmed these brackets out just so those 90 degree corners got cut out of there. It just cleans the look up a lot. The lever looks really good. Easy to access. We'll see how they stand over time going off road. Once it's locked, it's not as wobbly, but I'm thinking maybe the weight of that will unlatch it. So we might have to take that off or revise it and just do like a flat plate and do it that way, make it a little lighter. But other than that, shoo, we got some tubular door bars on the old outside cat. She is ready to rip. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.